Hello, my dear apprentices. In this new video, you will learn how to find the equivalent fractions. This is your coach, Mr. Magno. Let us begin. The first step is to read the instructions. Fill in the blanks. Oh, that sounds simple. All right, so fill in the blank. Let's look at what is missing here. As you can see, we have a already, already uh, an equation that equals that has a setup, which is one third divided times one. Um, the next step is the one is converted into a fraction in which when you do the division, it will equal one, which is three divided by three equals one. So now that is going to help us to find an equivalent fraction. One times three equals three. And obviously three times three equals nine. It's already done. So there it is. This what this is problem is saying is that one third equals three ninths. Remember, because these are equalities. All right, let's go to the second one. The second one is partially done. So if you look, if you pay, pay attention, um, what they do, they set it up again. It's the here's the problem. Uh, two thirds times one. And on C, they give you the same the same scenario. So they set up a problem for you. And now what you have to do is say, okay, so uh, I'm going to rewrite the two thirds, which is <clears throat> the same fraction. And I'm going to find the equivalent fraction. As you can see on this problem B, they gave us the equivalent fraction already. All we have to do is to make sure that this is true. When we, when we find the one in, written as a fraction where the denominator and the numerator are the same. Now, let's look at what we have here. We have three. We have a three times a missing number that equals 21. Okay, so what is that? Well, if you know, if you are a master of multiplication, three times seven equals 21. So that seven goes, the answer for that problem goes uh, on the denominator. And remember what you do to the denominator, you do to the numerator. And the reason is also because this equals one. Okay, that equals one. So that does not change the fraction, it stays the same. So let's do this. Two times seven equals 14, that makes sense. And three times seven equals 21, check, that one is done. Now, let me remind you again. So that two thirds, which is this right here, two thirds, it's the same as 14 21s. One is just reduced to the lowest term in, in which can be written. All right, let's look at the next one. And I think I need to zoom in a little more. Let's look at the next one. Again, we have a fraction times one. And in this scenario, they already gave us a clue as to what the number that we are missing in the middle, the, the, the factor that we're missing. So what is that? It's saying that five times a missing number that can have the letter N as a representation that will equal 25. And you all know if you're a good student of mathematics, know that N equals N equals five because five times five equals 25. And that will make the sentence true. So if you use, remember that this number has to be a one. As a consequence, we have to multiply the denominator by a five. Now, two times five equals 10, and that is the equivalent fraction. Now, um, now we can, re let me rewrite it again. So five halves is the same as 20 tenths. And remember that these uh, so-called equations are saying that whatever is on the left must much match whatever is on the right. Okay? And now, D is asking us to think and reason this. Compare the first factor to the value of the product. So which one is the first factor? Well, the first factor on C, let's look at C. The first factor is 5 halves. Then we multiply it times 5 over 5, which equals 1. And the product was 25 tenths. What they want us to do is to see if, compare the first factor to the value of the product. So compare the first factor 
for the value of the product. And what do we find? We find that five halves is equal to, to the product. I think that's what I need to do here. I need to go back and erase this, the five halves, and instead of the high five halves, I'm going to write the first factor is equal to the product. All right, let's do one more and see if this is going to be. Let's do one that it's um, blank. Let's, let's do C. As you can see, C, uh, we have uh, two fifths. We're going to multiply it times one. And that is going to equal. Let me see. What are the instructions here? I'll look at this. Express each fraction as an equivalent decimal. All right. So we have to convert it in, as a decimal. Just to refresh your memory, remember that we have a place value chart in which we have these places, okay? And this place right here is called the tenth. This is called the hundredth. And this is called the thousandth, okay? Now, we got to make the denominator one of those numbers, tenth, hundredth, or thousandth. So, as you can see this number, that the five can be multiplied by two to make it a ten, because that will make it help us make it a decimal. So we got to make this a 1. The numerator then has to be a 2. 2 times 2 equals 4. And as you can see, 4 tenths, if you read this correctly, 4 tenths means 4 tenths. No, uh, nothing in between, and there is zero holes. Remember, there is a zero holes means there is this is a fraction. All right, let's do one more. Let's say let's get a bigger number here. So let's say, let's look at G right here. We're going to multiply it, multiply it to make the denominator equal 10, 100, or 1,000. 25 can be multiplied by 4, and that will equal 100. On this one, the numerator has to be multiplied by 4 because that will, will not change the fraction. And, and that gives us the opportunity to find an equivalent fraction. So let's do this. 4 times 3 equals 12. You carry one over to the tenth. Four times two equals eight plus one equals nine. And this one, the answer is 92 hundredths. And hundredths must have two places to the right. And so you write the nine and the two on those places. Okay, this is the lesson. Remember that numbers have to be always equal to this this presented information. It can be turned into a tenth, hundredth, or thousandth. You turn that denominator into those numbers, and that will give you the understanding of what is it that you need to do to convert it into a decimal. Like, for example, this one right here. Let me just quickly give you one more. Like, see, two can be multiplied by uh, five because two times five equals ten. So that, that's what that would be. 20 times 5. Why? Because that will equal 100. And then you multiply the numerator. For this F, same thing. You are going to, let me remove that, 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 that. Multiply the 20 times 5 again, because that will equal 100. And that will be, the numerator will be the same. You multiply that times uh, 5. Okay? And then you do the math for the, those as well. So remember, the goal is to find the denominator that works for everything. For this one's right here, you only multiply the fraction. The whole number is already is not a fraction, so we can we don't need to convert it into a decimal. So again, 25 can be divided by 4. Why? Because that will make a product of 100. And then you multiply it by 4 on the, on the numerator. That will be 44 hundredths. And 44 hundredths is written that way. My friends, watch this video. It's a marvelous jewel of mathematics. Repeat it if you need to and get the work done. I know you can. You are a master of mathematics. I know you are. If you don't believe it, start thinking about it in that way. Signing out, your coach, Mr. Magno.